So Katana, oh Katana got a bunch. All right, fixed an issue with Dark Deception. It's I think it's it's cute that every string has a name. That's what I'll say about that. Yep, cool. And what happens? Fixed an issue with Dark Deception, AKA back one, four, two. Crushing blow, not triggering if the third attack is a counter. It did not trigger. I thought that was the whole thing. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm glad that works now. Is that the name of a button? Wow, it is. It's actually jump two. <laughs> okay, well, thank you to combatacademy.com for helping me figure that one out. So a Dean strike now is one more frame of hit pause. Hit pause. Well, okay, I mean, I do, do we know it? Fan toss amplify can now be delayed by up to seven more frames. Ah, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, down four to one into, and just, oh yeah. So here's as fast as possible, a little slower. Well, that, that actually seems pretty useful. Further away, it probably is where the bigger utility of this is. To keep people pegged down, to have it be so that they can't just always know what timing your follow-up is, so mess with follow block timings, presumably. All right, you know, there's a little bit more here. Reduce the combo damage scaling of fan lift and fan nato. Oh, cool. Okay, nice. Well, that's good. And then more damage on fan lift and fan nato. That's nice. And no longer allows breakaway. Oh. Ooh, now you can. Okay, that's pretty nifty. Right, right, for sure. So she gets this little extra damage with her. Whatever. That's nice. Royal protection buff. No longer gets removed after using certain attacks. Oh, I didn't know it did. Okay. Now grants a stacking damage buff up to 50%. Wow, that's really cool. So as the opponent here, there's actually back four two again. There's actually a reason to be maybe a little concerned about that. A four four. Ooh, look at her. Wow, she's getting huge buffs. Dang, all right, cool. And then, how long does this last? For a little while, right? Oh, does it just keep blasting? No. One, two, three, four. Oh, this looks like the maximum. All right, so what's this now? That is, oh, it's four. So that's usually, oh, it sticks around. 60, typically. 90. Pretty slick. And it sticks around, huh? Damn, that's, nice. that's legit damage right there from mid screen. In zoning? Not bad. Anyway, tween Edenian Twist Crushing Blow requirement triggers if Fatal Blow is on cooldown, no longer will be possible after Fatal Blow has successfully hit. Oh. And it's this. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And Edenian Twist Crushing Blow now has an alternate requirement of triggers if it counters or punishes a low or ducking attack. Oh, wow. If it counters or punishes a low or ducking attack. Is it if the opponent is trying to do, like, down two? Oh, yeah, weird. Okay. I guess if you're maybe being too predictable with your jumping, and you this lets you... Change your jump arc, obviously. Not by a ton if you're going for a jump in, but gives you this little extra range. Yeah, okay, I can see this. I can see this being useful. Maybe this is not like the best thing, but I can see some utility. However, it's quite minus, isn't it? I think it's pretty bad. Yeah, minus 17. So this is this is a call out, I guess, right? This is you are really calling out the opponent's intended anti-air, and you you're taking a risk because you're minus 17. So, all right, Katana, again, she got a ton of stuff. There was Crushing Blow on the back one, four, two. Now triggers if it is a counter, which it should have, I guess, already done. Jump two has one more frame of hit pause, huge. Phantos Amplify can be delayed. I like this, this is a cool buff. Then reduce the combo damage scaling on fan lift and fan nato and no longer allows the opponent to do breakaway, which is great. Those, this, These are nice buffs for sure, so she's, now we're going to be dealing more damage more consistently, which is great. 
Then Royal Protection, which is the little projectile counter. The buff remains. Oh, after using certain attacks. Oh, okay, so maybe it's specifically that it remains after throwing a fan. That's gonna mean that she gets more damage in project anti-projectile situations, which is cool. So a little bit more of a risk to throwing projectiles against Katana. And then in variation three, the jump into back forward three, little Adenian twist, I guess it's called. Now now counters, now gets a crushing blow if it counters or punishes a low or ducking attack. A low or ducking attack. What in the world? Does this count? Cause it, I mean, it's a low attack. It does. Funky. Funky. So literally low attacks. In addition, so not just crouching, but lows. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, she seems better. I don't know that this is, this is a tier maker, but yeah, I can see, I can see utility in this. So this is really just about making things work like they should, I think. And then some new stuff. Um, a little bit more, you have to respect her a little bit more in projectile games. You have to respect her damage a little bit more. And then in Fearless, when people go for the little jump arc change, you have to respect it a little bit more too. Kung Lao, the reaction to Vortex no longer allows the opponent to break away. You have to hold, right? And I have no idea at all what the combos are, but that's good. I guess he gets a little bit more consistent damage. What else do we got here? Noob. Shadow Slide Amplified has slightly increased hit region when opponent is in a combo. Okay, so combo should work a little bit better, I guess. And fix an issue with camera or whatever. So Noob, all right, this one combo situation is slightly improved, that's great. Shao Kahn, Wrath Hammer Crushing Blow is now triggers if hammer throw hits twice in a row. Wrath Hammer Crushing Blow requirement is triggers if hammer hit throw hits twice in a row. Before, I think it had to be a counter hit? It was something kind of weird. So, one, two. Yeah, it's good damage on that. 230. Scarlet, back two, deals 20 more damage. Ah, all right. So this is the one that has the crushing blow on it, right? You do it twice in a row. Yeah, that's fine. Still pretty unsafe. Great range on it though, at least. Um, not even that fast, unfortunately. 22 frames, looks like. Anyway. Then Sonya, up three, now starts up in 11 frames and no longer has two frames of vulnerability before active rapes. Oh, interesting, okay. So for Sonya, that was a bummer. Um, for example, uh, against Sonya as Baraka, I could do combo into spines and then hold up forward and it just like auto makes a safe jump uh, versus some characters only. And Sonya was one of them. So I wonder if that doesn't work anymore. Oh, cool, it doesn't work anymore. Well, that's good, I guess. <laughs> For her. All right, yeah, nice. So so previously, you'd be able to land and block in this situation. Or actually just hit her out of it. Just, bam. Um, but uh, not anymore, that's good. For her. Sindel, 112, no longer hits the opponent from outside of combos. That doesn't seem very significant. Joker, oh, wow, Kapow Crushing Blow is now plus five from minus 25? Let's go to Joker. I believe we're looking at Madman variation. This is the crushing blow on Kapow, which I believe is his, yes, back forward two in this one. So this has, you have to be at maximum range and also it has to be a counter hit. Out. Okay. So he's plus five on that now. Anyway, that seems nice. And then Toward throw, crushing blow requirement, triggers if fatal blow is on cooldown. Will no longer occur after smile, which is fatal blow has successfully hit. That makes sense to me. All right, so let's head back to the list of changes and just sort of sum up maybe. Um, Cassie, nothing. Fixed a visual issue. Gearus, slight nerfs. I'm, I'm surprised that they slightly nerfed Gearus again. It doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but it's, for the character who's already gotten nerfs over the year that the game's been out. Up 2 got slowed down, for 212 has a gap now, uh, the crushing blow of Sand Trap was changed to, it has to whiff first. I mean, there's more than that, I don't know, this, those jump out to me, but there's there's quite a few things that the character got. And, and none of them, I think, make the character really bad, like, he's still pretty good, it's just... 
I am surprised that there's more. That's all. I don't think it makes him terrible. I'm just a little surprised. Um, Jackie's change, where the bionic bounce costs a defensive bar if you do the close one or the far one. I think that makes sense. I think that's like a nicely targeted change. It's it's not. It doesn't kill her. She gets to still do combos without spending defensive meter, which is nice. She is just a little bit... She's taking a slightly bigger risk, right, when she uses it as a way to approach. That's all. Seems like a pretty reasonable change, I would say. Then... Jade. Back to... Right, back to and the Nitro Kit Crushing Blow requirement being, being buffed there. Uh, those are, you know, that's slight utility stuff. That's cool. Makes sense. Nothing major. Jax, same kind of thing, so a little bit more consistent in the combo that he gets in Grim Barrett. Johnny Cage in Outtake, where Rising Star was really strong. Still, It still seems strong. It, that's, it's just that you have to spend a defensive bar to make it safe. So you can still do chip outs well, you can still take control of down one trading kind of situations. Uh, that's, you know, that's nice. You can do that on a whiff. I still think that seems good. And they didn't nerf uh, Showstopper, which is, you know, also one of the best characters in the game. So Johnny still seems very strong. Kotokan, I like the changes. I think the buffs are nice. So he... Stand 4, which is that big ol' swinging... Makwahitu. Makwahitu. Now starts up one frame faster and can be special canceled. And that's that's great. So it's a it's a whiff punishing tool that can lead to damage. Or it also means that you can do stand four into damage buff totem. And that's safe, which is really strong. So Kotal got some buffs. Uh, the projectile causing five more frames of block stun, having more pushback, means that he's a little bit scarier in projectile wars like he's still not one of the best at it but he's a little bit scarier and I imagine there are probably some strings where you can at least make that something people have to think about as something that they gotta they gotta expect katana katana con um, this crushing blow works better or works I guess in the way that it should have which is good Phantos being delayable now for the Amplified version, that's nice. So so she too you have to respect a little bit more in Projectile Wars because there's that part of it and then there's also the fact that Royal Protection, which is her projectile parry thing, it, it gives her damage buff uh, if she lands it. And now that lasts longer. Lasts longer and also uh, doesn't go away on another fan, which is nice. And, you know, gets a bigger buff in terms of damage output afterward. So you have to respect her more in projectile games for both of those reasons. And then in Fanlift and Fan NATO, the damage scaling afterward is less, and also the opponent cannot break away during it, which is nice. So on both of those angles, she's getting more damage output. Which is nice. That's Those are nice changes. Then the Edenian Twist is is maybe more useful you know you're still taking quite a risk on block with it but at least there's a little bit more that you can do a little bit more maybe consistent crushing blow i don't know that that one's super important but uh the, the other stuff the the projectile game and the damage output those are nice kung lao so his looks like the main one is that vortex no longer allows the opponent to break away. So if he gets that in, what is it, Order of Light, I think is what that variation is called. Whatever variation three is called for him. I think it's Order of Light. If he gets that, then he can get more damage up, which is cool. Down for that. Noob, a little bit more consistent in combos, in whichever variation it is that has slide, whatever it's called. Seam double, is that what the other one's called? Anyway. Um, Wrathhammer for Shao Kahn now triggered now hits if it triggers twice in a row before I think it was that it had to be Twice in a row and the first hit had to be counter hit and punish I believe that's correct Let me know if that if I'm getting that wrong, but I think that was right So the fact that it's now just hits twice in a row without that additional thing. That's great a little bit more consistent Scarlet back to being a little bit more damage 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that is, that's nice. It's, it's just, it's a really slow overhead. Not, nah, maybe not really slow, but it's slow enough that at a high level play, you just rarely see it. Well, you rarely see the character, don't you? But, um, yeah, anyway, a little bit more damage. Probably not super important. Sonya's up three, being faster, and also not being vulnerable before it hits is really cool. It's good for her. It's just, you know, a little bit more consistent with how the rest of the cast works. Then... Sindel no longer hits the opponents from outside of combos. Okay, that's cool. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and then Joker, to sort of round things off. So now this crushing blow on the back forward to... What is it called? Kapow. Now it's not gonna suck on hit. And that's good because it's it's already pretty hard to land, to be honest. I mean, it's it, it has to be a crushing blow or punish. Sorry, a counter hit or punish from max range. Both of those things have to be true. And that's just hard to do. So I don't expect it to come up very often. And I haven't seen it very often. But if it happens, he should be plus, right? He shouldn't be minus 25 and maybe punishable in some situations at least. That's good. All right, so... Who got who got the buffs? You would say Katana got the buffs, Kotal got the buffs. Significant buffs, maybe more accurately. And then slight buffs for Joker, Shao, Noob, Kung Lao, Jax, and Jade. Slight nerf for Jackie and for Johnny, which seemed quite appropriate to me. Um, at least in those variations. And then Yeah, Sindel nerf that barely matters. Uh, Gears nerfs. Yeah, okay. So so Gears and Jackie are slightly nerfed. Okay, you know I think that's that's pretty reasonable. I wasn't expecting there to be major changes to the game. I just don't think it's the kind of game that needs to be majorly changed. I'm really happy with it overall. I, and I and I have been. I have been really happy with Mortal Kombat 11 overall. Uh, you know, so I, I still, I think most of these characters are strong. I don't think there's a bum in here. Well, maybe there's a bum, but I don't think there's many bums in here. Even this character is like not a terrible character. He's, if, so in my opinion, he's the worst, but I would say that's in the context of the game where being the worst, you can still do pretty well with him. Are you going to win a major with this character alone? You're probably not, but you can definitely win locals and online events and stuff. We've seen that happen. I, I do feel he should get a little bit more, but oh well. Other characters that I think maybe need a little bit more, maybe I would say like Scarlet. Maybe I would say who? And at this point, I don't know. People seem pretty good. Maybe who do I think sucks? Maybe nobody else. Everybody else I feel like is pretty good. I'm I'm happy with the game's balance overall. I continue to be. And what I what I like about it too is is that I feel that. Netherrealm has become so like patient and cautious when it comes to the nerfs and buffs. You know, if folks in the chat weren't around at the time of like Mortal Kombat 9 and Injustice 1, Netherrealm developed a reputation for being kind of over heavy handed, I guess, when it comes to nerfing and buffing. Like they would, characters would just swing wildly sometimes from being ass to being great or the other way from being great to sucking and and multiple times in some cases even within the same game. So that was that was a reputation that was I think pretty pretty reasonably deserved and sometimes patches would come out you just wouldn't there'd be no warning there, it wouldn't be this this final combat just happened so a patch makes sense but it would be like just out of the blue sometimes right before a major. They're they're so much better about how they do patching now and I would I would much rather it be slow. I think that makes it easier for players to plan and learn characters if they don't expect things to just get blown up. And that can be, maybe that's annoying if you're a character, if you're a character loyalist for a character who's not strong, then I understand that that's annoying. But for the players who the balance really matters for, I think that's a really good way to do it because it just lets you plan and lets you, it lets you decide which characters should get your time and your focus. And if you're if you're at anything below like a tournament level, the balance just doesn't really matter. It's it, the game is so is well enough balanced that if you're not out there to like win final combat or something like that, then 
all these characters are fine. It's you're not at a, you're not at a level where the slight variations between characters is really going to make a big difference. You're just I'm sorry, it's not like that. The game is is balanced enough that that's just not right. At the highest level, of course, there are going to be differences, and so you you see players use typically the great the best characters in the game, and the, and players who insist on not right. I think Biohazard is a super good player, and I wish he would move away from this character. For example, like because that's the level of play that he's at, where where it does matter. But if you're not at that level, this game is great. It's so well balanced. I'm really happy with the game overall. So anyway, nice nice job on a patch. It's another cautious patch. I think that's the way to do it. <laughs>